Well, good morning from Willow Oak Farm. See that big cooler in the back of my truck? Wonder what we're gonna do? Well, stick around and let me show you. Well, what we're gonna do with that cooler is we're going to get some catfish fingerlings to go in the ponds. I ordered some from a hatchery, lower part of the state. They come around to the, the feed and seed stores at, at different times. So I saw they were coming to mine, my local feed store, so I ordered 100 fingerlings. And they're over there now. So let's go pick them up. Come right along with me. All right, we're pulling up here now. Here's the Travis Rest feed and seed. And there is the fish truck. Let's pull up here, get us some fish. Okay, well here's what we got. We have got two bags right here of fish. I had them put them in two separate bags because they're going in two ponds. And can you see them down in there? They look good and healthy and they're supposed to be 50 plus in each bag. About 100 catfish. So we're gonna put 50 in each one. They want you to bring a cooler for two reasons. One reason, put these bags in and it'll help keep them cool in here. Another reason, just in case that bag started leaking, you'd have something to catch them. So let's get down to the pines and set them free. What I'm doing is I'm throwing out a little fish feed in here get our fish fed that are in there so hopefully they won't go devouring our young ones when we turn them in in a few minutes so let's set up and get some turned loose well as you can see I've got my bag set in the water right here down here on the corner let's see if we can't just set some on the plate There we go, there's one bag set free in one pond. Let's go get the others. Well, we're up here at the other pond and we're gonna do the same thing. I fed these fish out here and I'm gonna attempt to put part of them out down here, then go up to the other end of the pond and put some out up there. And I meant to tell you what they do is they put them in these big bags right here and then they've got an oxygen tank. You see they've got a little water in there, then they'll stick that oxygen hose down there and fill it up, and then put rubber bands all over it. All right, let's go to the other end and do the same thing. Got a good meat left in there. All right, little fishies, swim away. So that's 100 plus catfish. A little over 50 in each pond. And let's just hope they survive. Now if you look around, you'll see I gotta get out here and do some bush hogging. I mean some weed eating. It's grown up around these ponds again and the weather cooled down a little bit more in the next few weeks. We're gonna get out here and clean it up. I'll do you before and after to show you how much better it looks when it's clean. Well, folks, we got the catfish situated, so now let's talk cattle. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know I just keep a handful of cows around. Used to have a good many more, but a couple years ago I sold a lot, trying to restructure and regroup. Now, what I've always tried to do is I like to calf in the early spring. Early spring, I'm talking mid-March, mid-April because I like I don't like having calves all year long look like we got an audience of goats came to watch 
I don't like having calves all year long. And the same thing with the goats too. I want them born, same thing, mid-March, mid-April. And I especially don't want any coming in the dead of winter. And I don't want them in the dead of summer either. Well, my old red bull, red Angus bull that I sold a few months back, he evidently wasn't getting a job done. And he wasn't that old. For a few years, he did good, but he wasn't like a five-year-old. So I put the bull in there with him like mid-June. Should have had the first calf the earliest, mid-March, mid-March to mid-April. Well, you see that little red bull calf right there? He was born in the middle of May. So he was two months late. Then the cow number 32, where is she? She's over there laying down on the other side of number 10 here. This is the red bull calf mama right here. Number 34, excuse me. I saw her springing up, so I moved her over here with my two red heifers I was growing out. She ended up calving late June. Now we lost her calf, born stillborn. I'm not gonna blame that on the bull, but once again, she should have been bred to calf mid-March to mid-April, late June. Then we come over here, this number 26 laying down right there. Well, I've been washing, washing her. I said, well, evidently she didn't get bred at all. But if you look at her now, you'll see she's making a bag and she's starting to spring up a little bit. So we're gonna have a fall calf. She should have calfed in the middle of March, middle of April. We're in the middle of September right now. So it looks like we're gonna have a late, late September or early October calf with her. So we put my little short uh, South, South Pole bull in, once again, in the middle of March. So hopefully he got number 34 there bred those two big red heifers there bred for spring calf and number 10 there i don't think i kept the bull long enough to get her bred back but hopefully old mo there got her bred my dilemma is going to be with this one right here if she calves into this month's first of next do i isolate her and hold her back till june of next year to rebreed her or do I just leave him with her and let her breed well don't know that's something I have to think about but I'm going to try to get them all synced back up to spring calving so we'll just have to see what happens with her calf and go from there now while we're on the subject of cattle and goats Let's talk fertilizer and lime. What I've been doing the last few years is putting out a little fertilizer in the early spring. I like to put out triple 17, about 300 pounds to the acre. But I've noticed that I've been getting a little broom straw in my pasture. And I'm bad, I hadn't done any soil samples. Should have. But I've been noticing been getting a little bit but it really surprised me the difference in last year and this year. This year I've got a lot of broom straw in my pasture. So what I'm going to do, that, that tells me that my soil is real acidic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call and I'm going to get some lime ordered and I'm going to put out some lime, about two tons of lime to the acre on my pasture here. I'm no expert by a long shot, but I've heard for years that if your pH isn't right, then you're really wasting money putting fertilizer out because the fertilizer is not going to do the job it should do. And a lot of people, I fertilize in the spring, a lot of people that can stand it, they'll fertilize in the fall, keep the pH right, then in the spring, hit it with some nitrogen. But everything depends on the weather. You know, if you get that rain and good weather, it's going to grow. But it doesn't matter how good your soil is and how much fertilizer you put out. If summertime comes and it turns out extremely hot and no rain, then you're not going to do any good. So it's just a roll of the dice when you're farming. So I'll tell you what let's do. Time to move them up a notch. I'm going to put them up another 
let the fence give them a little more uh, pasture. There's still plenty of grass in here. They've grazed over it, sold it some. They always like to go to fresh pasture. So I'm gonna give them a little fresh pasture and we'll pick back up. Well, we got the fence set up on this side, going down that corner post right there. You go across right here. You see that first, I don't know if you can see that. Just right this side of the mineral feeder there, mineral tub. We're gonna take that fence down. And then if you look hard enough, you can see our main fence where we've got the pasture split on the other side. We'll leave that there. And I'm not back uh, fencing, I'm taking them up for a simple reason. Out in this front pasture, there's no shade. That shade where they are back there now is the only place they got to get. So we're gonna keep walking them up through here. And let them graze this till we get to the road. Then after all that's grazed, then we'll start with our main split down there and go the other direction. But right now, let's take up our middle fence there and let them on some fresh grass. Well, the fence is up. They've got fresh grass to go to. But as you can see from behind me, they're not a bit hungry. They're letting over there chewing their cud. After a while, when they get the urge, they'll get up and mosey on to the fresh grass. As I say, we'll keep walking up through there till we get to the road, then head back the other direction. That's all we're gonna do for now. Got the catfish taken care of, getting the cattle taken care of. Now what we've got coming up, we're waiting on the weather to cool down just a little bit more. It's been in the 90s last couple of days, or right at 90. And we can get out here and plant our fall garden. Got our uh, sprouts ready to go, so we're gonna plant a little bit in the fall garden. Then in the middle of October, we'll be working the goats and splitting them, putting them with the billies. That's all we got for now. So next time, hope you have a great week.